Hello there, my name's Tony Mercier. I've come here today to see if I can find a, a suitable landscape, and there's loads of it here. I mean, whichever way I look up and down the river, it's um, there's there's a scene to be painted. But I'm using a bristle brush uh, just to work it in quite aggressively to cover the whole canvas. And I need to keep it wet, and I need to keep it all on the move. Touch of the you can see how red that is, and uh, that's getting quite a buttery of texture to it now, and it allows me just to slide around and uh, I'm actually mixing the paint on the canvas to get the weight of colour that I want for the whole thing. And in the centre I'm going to need a, uh, an area of light. And I don't know quite what that will be yet, so I'll just feed this in, into it and onto it and get something of a happy blend. Well, I'm using uh, burnt umber and uh, hooker's green. Now I've, I've got um, a small bristle brush here again and I'm, I'm looking at the landscape across the way there and I know the river's going through the middle so I'm just going to start sort of creeping in with the, the bank. Now I'm using the rolling technique here and I'm actually feeling that the, the tree's going to be discovered in amongst all these marks. And uh, I know roughly where I'm going, but I'm letting it stay fairly loose. And that, that's quite bright over there, the, the tops of those bushes. And by, by walking in and out with the, the brush like this, I can actually... I am feeling the canvas and I'm thinking, right, I, I need to go a bit wider there and where that overhanging branches into the river, it's just, at this stage, it will just be a hint of what's going to be there. Now I can go right across the back there because they, they're up and down and they can be tuned later on. Because of the greenery, it's not showing up too much, but in the painting, I can exaggerate that slightly just to to give a point of interest and to actually describe the scene we've got. So again, I'm just I'm putting in make-believe trunks at the moment or the way that the branches are going there. Um, some of them are very right or adaptable and some will be wrong, but we just need that fuzz, a hint of a tree, and to establish the height of the water and like I say this bit that's disappearing around the bend that needs to be quite strong so I could I could leave them at that weight perhaps and then come back in and give a, a pure dart of uh, titanium white there that would emphasize it a little bit more and these these reeds on the just here they actually can come up quite a lot higher and stronger And those little splashes of colour, they're also going to um, bounce back down there. I mean, some of these reflections and things, I, I would tidy up in the studio. Just rolling back over these to this is a dry brush technique over the top and you can see that it's leaving a trace just to establish that tree a little bit more and that little bit stronger on the top and the, the top bar going through the sunlight's coming through this way so I'm going to establish that yet again just that little bit stronger this is probably as far as we can go at the moment. We've got the essence of it on here. I'll take it as far as I can possibly go, but we're, we're just about to finish. And uh, there'll, there'll be the cloud. There's a cloudless sky. There are a couple of clouds right off in the distance, but um, 
in this picture to make it a painting. We, we can feature clouds in here, which I, again I shall do in the studio. Here we are, we've come back to the studio now and I'm going to um, complete this picture or, or get as far as I possibly can with it and uh, hopefully show you some more tips and hints on how to paint with uh, Liquitex acrylics. That whole lot, it just registers stronger as a the base of the trees. It's probably um, fairly accurate to what we've actually got. And then I just drag the bottom of that out. There's, there's a couple of dark bits that I need to register. There's probably one and two there. Uh, and there's a, just around there, there's another little one. Not quite where. And that goes back around there. So that's okay. And also we, we in against this edge here because we can put the reeds past it and cheat a little bit and have some fresh ones going past the, the darkness. And now I can go back into this bit and to work down to the treetops to get the colour that I want and the state of finish that I'm after. And you can you can probably see it there how hey, hey, that little bit of um, prism violet actually warms that up in that area. It's very subtle. You don't you don't actually need much of it. And when there's a, like a tracery of the branches and whatnot coming over that, that probably looks very crude at the moment. But that will actually just, we'll be able to see through that and it will sit there quite nicely. And I'm, I'm, that's it, I'm, I'm adjusting as I go, that's ultramarine going back in there. So I'm visually colour checking all the time on the canvas rather than doing it on the palette and thinking, yeah, that's it. And then time I get it up to the palette, what you thought was alright on the palette is wrong on the canvas. So that's, that's the way I do it. Tips, bristles of the brush. Where it's too positive I just go perhaps a little higher and fuzz into it. When I put the sap green back for the, the reeds that are growing up either side of the style, will they actually feature strong enough, but a little bit of burnt umber, like I said, just to get the darkness against that post. That's slightly sort of right hand sided. And now I can come back in with the Hansa yellow down one side of it and broken into it in places. And because we're breaking that line and that, that um, right angle square that was in there, um, it should just look that bit sharper or easier to look at to get it as though it's, it's worn in and the side that might pick up the light would be looking quite fresh just in there but we don't overdo that really because it it'll just we only need to hint that it's there and let the imagination make the rest up with the sap green it'll be growing past the edge of the path on this side we won't see that much of it anyway burnt umber straight in on top of the sap green scuff them out highlights across the, the tree here now just roll them in there's a plain area up here that uh, the light is coming from this way so we, we need that a little bit of accent on there. I'm rolling the brush. This is a technique that I don't know when I started doing it, but it works very well. And it's because it's random, you're getting quite a nice uh, mottled, stippled, scumbled effect all in one go.